What defines something as vintage? I've seen a lot of things from my childhood being defined as vintage, and I take offense to that. But today, we are going to make three recipes that are defined as vintage according to the internet, not according to me. So if they are from your childhood, do not take offense. But these have been around for quite a while, and we're gonna give them a try. Hey y'all, I'm Mandy, and this is Mandy in the Making. For our first recipe, this is a dinner recipe. This one is called a chicken and cheese noodle bake. It's very similar to a chicken spaghetti, but apparently the recipe has been around for a very long time. We're gonna get started by preheating the oven to 350. The recipe that I found online uses this entire thing, a pound of spaghetti. However, it makes two casseroles. So if you wanted to do that, you could definitely make one for now and one to freeze. That's totally fine, but I'm cutting the whole thing in half. So we are just going to cook this according to package directions. So I'm gonna get water going and boil this. Okay, as far as our veggies go, we're gonna use half of this green, half of the red peppers, and this one whole onion. So the recipe says to chop all of these, not dice. So I'm gonna use my larger uh, chopping blade here on this vegetable cutter. All of these are gonna be cooked in the same pot at the same time, so I'm just gonna cut them all here into the uh, vegetable cutter at the same time. Okay, so I've got this large pot here. It is heating to about medium high. I just added in three tablespoons of butter. We're gonna let that melt before we add in all of our veggies. Okay, so we are just going to saute these in the butter until they are soft. Very Christmassy. I'm filming this video before Christmas, so tis the season. Just jumping in here to tell you that today's video is kindly sponsored by Thrive Market. If you aren't familiar with Thrive Market, it is an online membership-based grocery store on a mission to make healthy living affordable and easy for everyone. If you are like myself and you find yourself in the grocery store looking for healthier organic options and you kind of gasp at the price, Thrive Market is for you. You'll get guaranteed savings on every single order. So not only are you getting the highest quality organic products, but you are saving money. And if you find a lower price on that same product, somewhere else, they will price match it. So how it works, you can either choose to join for a full year or you can do a month to month membership. I highly recommend doing the year because it's cheaper and they guarantee that you will make back your annual membership in savings. If you don't, Thrive Market will credit you the difference. So month to month, it is $12 a month. But if you choose the annual membership like we have, it's only $5 a month. It is billed annually. Not only are you finding wonderful organic options on Thrive Market, you can search through a variety of different diets and needs specific to you. So if you are gluten-free, you can do a search and it will show you all of the products that would apply to you. And in a world where we do most of our shopping online for just about everything else, isn't it nice that you can also do your grocery shopping online? You can be in your PJs and you're still saving money and it comes right to your front door. You can shop online via your computer or you can use their app and you can do what I do and you just add things to your order until you hit that $49 threshold and all orders over $49 will ship free. They are shipped from their zero waste warehouses in carbon neutral shipping. I definitely have my favorites from Thrive Market, but it's always fun to throw in some new things that I've never tried before. I do check out the ratings there on their website just to see what others have said about the products. Not only do they have your grocery essentials, but they have eco-friendly cleaning supplies, non-toxic beauty items, supplements, personal care items, organic kids products, wine, sustainably sourced meat and seafood, and more. So I really encourage you to just go check it out. With the new year coming up, I know a lot of us focus on healthy eating at the beginning of the year. We've just left all the holidays where all that heavy food kind of sticks with us. So look for those healthy options on thrivemarket.com. Just go check out thrivemarket.com slash Mandy in the making. And when you use that link, you will get 30% off of your first order plus a free gift worth up to $60. So you're already saving money with Thrive Market, but you're gonna save additional 30% on your first order and get a free gift. Now is the time to do it. Okay, now that these are nice and soft, I've got three tablespoons of all-purpose flour. We're just going to sprinkle this in, stir it around and let it kind of cook down a little bit. We'll let this cook for about a minute. And now we're gonna add in about a cup of milk. You wanna add it in slowly and kind of stir as you go. We do want this to come up to a boil. This is hard to do one-handed, y'all. 
But that flour is gonna help thicken everything. And we're just gonna let it thicken for just a couple of minutes before we add everything else in. Okay, now we're gonna add in a can of cream of mushroom soup, a half a cup of sour cream, two cups of shredded chicken. This is just a rotisserie chicken and some salt and pepper. Okay, let's get that good and combined. And then we are going to put in our drained pasta. We're just gonna toss this around to coat it really well before we transfer it to our baking dish. And really, this particular pot could just go straight in the oven, but I am gonna put it in a baking dish. We're gonna grease our baking dish first with this extra virgin olive oil spray from Thrive Market. I love this spray, it sprays out so nicely. And this baking dish is like an 11 by seven. Just a heads up, it's not a full nine by 13, but you probably could just use a nine by 13 and it will be just fine. Mmm, oh good. Not me taking a bite over here. And now on top, I've got about a cup and a half of mozzarella cheese that's shredded. I am using the um, creamy melt. I think it has a touch of cream cheese in here and it helps it to melt a lot better. You could do a couple of different cheeses. I think the recipe even calls for cheddar cheese too, but I'm just going to be using this today. Now let's cover this with some aluminum foil. Now this is going in at 350 covered for 20 minutes. Then we will remove the foil and then it will bake for another five to 10 minutes longer. Gracie, can you get by? She said, no, you had cheese out and you didn't give me any, so I ain't moving. It's a vintage meal. What do you think about vintage? I like it. So, how old is vintage? I don't know. I don't either. Probably as old as me. <laughs> Pretty vintage myself. Yeah. Look here. Creamy? Uh-huh. That's what this thing is going to be. Yes. Wow. You like that? Yes. Creamy, 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 creamy. Good. Cheesy. It's like super creamy and then like you get the pepper. Yeah. And it like kind of changes things up a little sure. bit you know yeah. gives it a little crispiness a little mm -hmm. fresh taste i guess okay. kind of freshens it up a little bit yeah i'm excited to dig in it looks really good and it smells very good ma'am did i forget to give you something comfort food super creamy how do you think i got it so creamy you didn't put cream cheese in that how do you know you said you didn't put cream cheese in that. <laughs> But not put no cream cheese in there. You said you got sour cream in this and cream of mushroom soup, right? Right. And milk and cheese, you know. Milk. So it didn't need any cream cheese. You looked out this time. Yeah, I did look out. You did. Okay, it's time for our second vintage recipe. And y'all, y'all ask all the time, does Steven ever not like something that you make? The answer is yes. And this is one of the things that he's not a huge fan of. I did a poll over on Instagram asking if everyone loved pineapple casserole or if they didn't or if they had never even heard of it. And over half of the responses were, I've never even heard of it. My mind was blown, I was shook because I love pineapple casserole. And I, it may just be an old Southern recipe. I don't know, let me know. If you love pineapple casserole and you're not from the South, then that debunks that. But we're gonna make pineapple casserole. I've made it for years and I've kind of tweaked it to my liking. There's lots of different ways to make it, lots of different amounts of things, but I'm gonna share with you my way. Okay, we're gonna get started by preheating the oven to 350. I'm also going to shred some cheese. I know a lot of you have asked about my cheese shredder. This particular one is no longer available. It was sold on QVC. A subscriber sent it to me and I've loved it for a couple of years now. But I have one linked in my Amazon store that is very similar from Amazon and very highly rated. And I actually purchased it myself and made sure that it was up to my standards and I really like it. So just thought I would share that with you if that's something you're interested in. I need about a cup and a half or so of cheese. As I was taking this apart, I was grabbing cheese to give to Gracie and she's not in here. It is mid afternoon when I'm filming this and she is fast asleep. It is her nap time. 
So I'll save her some cheese for later. <laughs> Next, I need to crush up some Ritz crackers. Now you can use this entire sleeve of Ritz crackers if you would like. I feel like this is personal preference. It depends on how thick you want your layer of Ritz on top. I don't like mine to be too much. So I'm gonna use about half, maybe a little more than half, but feel free to use however much you prefer. Okay, we're just gonna set that to the side. Now I've got two cans of pineapple chunks. These are 15 ounce. Um, I am going to save about one quarter of a cup of the juice. I should probably do this over the sink because I'm gonna make a mess. But you're gonna drain both cans, but you need to save about a quarter cup of the juice. They've been drained and here's my juice. Let's add our pineapple chunks to a large bowl. We're also gonna add in that juice. You wanna add in your cheese. This may be a little too much cheese. I should have measured it, but I didn't. But you want about a cup and a quarter, a cup and a half. I'm gonna go ahead and stir this a little bit. Now you're gonna take a quarter cup of flour and sprinkle that in. Go ahead and stir that. And about a half a cup of white sugar. Again, this is personal preference. Some people like up to a cup. I've seen some recipes. So it depends on how sweet you want it. My sweet spot is right at about a half a cup. Okay, that is ready to go. Okay, I had grabbed a nine by 13, but I, I really only need about an eight by eight. I'm going to spray it with some nonstick spray. And we are going to dump this mixture in here. Okay, and now we're just gonna cover it with our crackers. Now this is going to feed maybe six people. So if you're looking to feed a crowd, I would just double this recipe, do that whole sleeve of crackers, if not more. Lastly, I just have slices of butter. I've got about a fourth a cup or a half a stick of butter. I'm just going to put these very thin slices all over the top. This is going in a 350 degree oven for about 30 minutes. See, it's over here, baby. It's right here. Hey, it's over here. I'm a little blind girl. I'm so sorry. Here you go. Steven is busy currently. I am gonna have him try this on camera for y'all. It's been so long since I've made it just because it's not his favorite. I usually, if I make it, I'm making it to take somewhere so that it doesn't go to waste. I don't want it to go to waste. This won't go to waste, believe me. Let's try it. Oh, that's a lot of steam. Oh my gosh. I don't know how he doesn't like it. He says he doesn't love warm pineapple. He says it doesn't belong on pizza. I've made a ham in the crock pot before and put pineapple in there. He's not a fan. It's just not his thing. But y'all, the cheesiness and then the butteriness of the Ritz crackers are already buttery. And then you add the butter on top and it's not overly sweet. I could eat that whole thing in one sitting. I, that's no exaggeration. I would be sick, but I could do it. If you've never made this, I highly recommend that you give it a try. It's like a side dish, but it's almost like a dessert. Steven's oh coming. Gosh. I don't know about this now. I don't know. I can't believe I'm doing this. <laughs> oh gosh, look at that. Steven. So I went back there and I told him, I said, Steven, are you gonna come taste test this? He was like, I'm not eating it. Cheese and pineapple pineapple together no i don't want to i said fine come tell him why you won't try it he said i'll come try it have you ever made something stephen don't like that over there <laughs> come on we're gonna try it all right let me get you let me get you a plate you can't knock it till you try it you done tried it you know <laughs> look just eat what you want and or eat one bite and then i'll eat the rest i think the problem i have is i have to not think about what's in it. You always uh, call me dramatic. Are y'all watching this performance? <laughs> Don't eat no more. I'll eat it. <laughs> Why? Why don't you like it? It's just something about... Oh, savory. We got some pie crust or, you know, some crumble or whatever and a little sugar and then uh, some 
uh, cheddar cheese, and then pineapple. No. All right. Does pineapple belong on pizza? Negatory. Absolutely not. There's your answer. If you like pineapple on pizza, you'll love this. If you don't, you won't. Mm, that's probably true. Mm -hmm. You know what mm. would really put it over the top? What? So if I put some cream cheese in there. Oh with god. <laughs> You know what would be funny? You know what would be funny? Is if you put cream cheese in it, I would actually like it. Right. That would be weird. That would take the cake. It would be like super sweet. You know, if you if you put cream cheese in it over the cheddar cheese, I wouldn't be as... Because it makes sense. Yeah. When I think of no, cream cheese, I think of dessert. I think of dessert. This is not a dessert though, is it? Yes and no. It's a, it's a side dish. That's, that's the thing it's I get hung up on. It's a side dish. I know. I think that's the thing that I get hung up on is that it's not a dessert, but it kind of looks like a dessert. And then when you taste it, you're like, this is either a really horrible dessert. <laughs> it's so good, y'all. Don't listen to this mess over here. <laughs> don't. It's so good. Uh, so don't knock it till you try it. But if you don't like pineapple on pizza, it's probably not going to be your thing. I still love you. I'm sorry. Did I hurt your feelings? No. Okay, good. I already knew you didn't like it. <laughs> It ain't I don't want to hurt nobody's feelings <laughs> in here. It ain't news to me. I know you didn't like it. Oh. But I still wanted to make it. Yeah. Because I love it. You know, I might eat it cold. I might try it cold. No. Like I said, I think it's the whole dessert thing. No, because you want the on. cheese to be gooey. Oh, gosh. Don't talk <laughs> about it. We have one more vintage recipe. I don't think I've ever had this. Honey, have you ever had corn pudding? Corn pudding. Corn pudding. Maybe. Pudding. Don't tell me about it. Pudding. Pudding. If you're in the South, you say pudding. In the recipe, so this is definitely a vintage recipe, it says use day old bread. And I know that means kind of dried out bread. I didn't have any bread that was already dried out. So I um, went by the store, went by Aldi, and picked up this Italian bread. And I'm going to make it day old by drying it out in the oven. I'm gonna preheat my oven to 300. I'm going to slice this up or kind of cube it up put it in the oven for just 10 to 15 minutes. I'm just gonna keep an eye on it. I don't want it to get real crusty, but I just want to dry it out. So the recipe calls for five slices of dried out bread or day old bread. I'm gonna go with, I don't know, uh, not quite an inch thick slices, maybe a half inch thick. It says you want it cubed. So I'm just gonna do kind of like bite sized pieces, I guess. You know what I did remember though? It said crust removed. So this is not a very hard crust, but I am gonna try to remove most of the crust. I totally forgot that it said that. It's not gonna go to waste, I'm eating it. I'm gonna be full before before we even get started. What you want? You best be careful. Don't hurt me. Dude. What is that? What kind of bread is that? It's Italian bread. Some about Italian. <laughs> Italian. Mmm. My daddy says Italian. Don't oh, yeah. stand over here and eat all my bread. We need it for the recipe. You got a big old hunk of bread. Then eat that hunk of bread. Don't eat my this. My goodness, look at that thing. <laughs> Golly. Man, it smells good too. Stick your nose in it, please. <laughs> well, <laughs> that's some of that bread you can just kind of pinch off a big piece. Yeah. And just eat it. I got to dry. Hey, here's some of that. What's that called? That's, that's the, the heel. That's the heel. The end of it. The end piece. Ah. All right, I'm just going to dry this out in the oven. I make day old bread. <laughs> You've been cheating. Yeah. I'm just putting it on the stone to put it in the oven. And that's just going to go in the oven for like 10 minutes. I toasted these in the oven for about 13 or 14 minutes. I feel like they're perfect. They didn't get browned, but they are definitely dried out and I mean, just a tad bit spongy, but not really. They're pretty hard. Some of them are a little crispier than other pieces, but I think that's perfect day-old bread. Now let's get started on the recipe. We need to preheat the oven to 350. Okay, in this large bowl, I'm gonna crack four eggs. And of course I got it in there. Okay, y'all said to use this. Oh. I'd be daggone. Look at that. I would have stuck my fingers all up in there and it was like a magnet. It stuck right to it. Tell you what, y'all always have the best ideas. To my four eggs, we're gonna add in a cup of whole milk and we are gonna beat this all together. Let's add in our can of cream style corn. It's coming off here. All right, well, there we go. 
and the recipe calls for a half a cup of sugar. I'm doing a little less than half a cup. I'm gonna do about a fourth a cup. I don't know. I feel like a half a cup of sugar in this is a lot. So we're going with a fourth a cup of sugar. I don't know what I'm talking about though. I've never made this, so this is all new to me. But I feel like the cream style corn is already kind of sweet. Let's move this to the side. Now you need a eight by eight or nine by nine baking dish. Mine still has pineapple casserole in it. So I'm gonna use this. This is like a, I don't know what this is, seven by nine maybe. I do need to grease it first. And we're gonna add in our day old bread to the bottom. We're just gonna pour the egg mixture, the corn mixture, right over top. This is so interesting to me. And then lastly, we're just gonna dot it with about a tablespoon of butter. I did chop it up into really small little pieces. This is going in the oven uncovered for 50 to 60 minutes. You want to make sure that a knife inserted in the center comes out clean. First of all, it looks tremendous. It's interesting. I'm scared to try it. I'm, I'm going to be real honest. It looks good. It looks real good. Be careful. It's very hot. It's got some crustiness on top there with the the breading. I'm going to let him be the guinea pig. I ain't got no pineapple in it. I ain't got no, no. cream cheese in it. <laughs> Neither nor. They didn't, think of, they didn't think of those things back in the vintage days. In the vintage days. Let's day. put some cream cheese in that. No, they didn't say that. <laughs> Let's put some pineapple in it. No, we ain't doing that. Look. Mmm. Yeah. No way. Mm-hmm. That's good. Oh wow. A little sweetness of the corn. There's some sugar in there too. Got some yeah, it's definitely got some sweetness to it, but it's not like overly much. I, I cut back on the sugar amount that it said to put in it. Because I didn't mm. want it to be too sweet. Y'all, I am shocked. I like this. Okay. This is really good. Okay, I need I need it. Well, I'm nervous. Why am I nervous about this one? The whole time I was making it, I was like. Mm. Am I going to like this? You pull a little bit more on that plate. <laughs> He's digging out of the casserole well, dish. I'm dig out the dish in here, oh, y'all. You're going to burn your mouth. Stink. It's good, right? It is really good. You're going to like it. You think so? Yeah. Is that egg? Yeah. Ah, There's four eggs in okay. there. Okay. Yeah. I like that. This is weird, but it's good. The texture like of it. the egg mixture. Yeah. Throws me off just a tad. I'm a texture person. Well, it's not gooey. No. And it's not gummy. It's not slimy. It's not slimy. Just a hint of sweetness. Mm-hmm. I love the bread in there. The corn. I like the corn flavor. The corn is good. Yeah, I like the bread. I like the crunch of the bread. It's got great texture. It's like the, it's got this soft, you know, center, and then the crunch on top of that. You got the sweetness and then the corn in there, little pops of those corn kernels in there. Really good. I like it. I don't love it. I don't see myself making it again. Really? I don't know. It's just not. Corn is not my favorite vegetable anyway. Gotcha. And I'm funny about creamed corn too. Like, yeah. <laughs> I knew starting out that this probably wouldn't be my favorite recipe, but I wanted to try it because it sounded so cool. I like this a lot. Yeah, he's digging in. I didn't think there was egg in there though. Yeah, there's egg. There's four eggs. I didn't think that. I didn't even think about that. He just got him a whole other plate. Yeah, that's good. He loves it. If I you, like it. If you love corn, you're probably going to love this. We still haven't decided what defines something as vintage. What does define something as vintage? <laughs> like, how old does it have to be to be vintage? Well, I mean, vintage is just another polite way of saying it's old. Old. <laughs> like us. Right? Like me. Right. It's old. You are older than me, so I'll no, go no, with I'm that. Vintage. You're vintage. I'm more vintage than you are. <laughs> Thanks, y'all. See you next time. Just a reminder to go check out Thrive Market. You can go to thrivemarket.com slash Mandy in the making. And on your first order, you're going to save 30%. Plus, you're going to get a free gift worth up to $60.